So is anybody else's life completely falling apart or is it just mine? I had recorded all of this, then I lost the audio, so I'm going to go ahead and do a voiceover. This is a Audi A4 a B8 model year 2013. If you want to get really technical, it's the facelift B8, so the B8.5. And it's unfortunately gotten the speedo cancer. So these lights here by the tech are out, as well as some by the speedometer. Sometimes they also flicker and do a little light show as well. I get it right into it. We need to pull off two panels to get the cluster out. This silver one right here and the little panel under the steering wheel. Let me do it for you so I can break all of my clips and you only break two instead of eight. Here's a magnificent shot of how to pull the panel under the steering wheel off. Put two fingers under it and pull towards you. There's one clip on either side of the steering wheel. You might have to wiggle it free from the speedometer in the middle, but it should pop off and go down. It'll help if you put your steering wheel all the way down. Next, we need to take the big silver panel off. There are two clips by the left vent, two on the right of the cluster, and two behind the emergency flashers button. There are no screws, just give or wa. Take care to not pop the chrome trim off around the left vent like I'll do in a couple of seconds. At this point, you might as well torch the car because reassembling that fucker is nearly impossible. Now, normally working one-handed in the dark is my forte, but I did need both hands to do this. I'll show you where all the clips were in a second. First, we need to remove the connector for the emergency flasher button. It's a pretty standard connector with the little tab here that lets you release it and pull it out. Here's where all the clips are. They're all parallel with the ground, so you'll need to pull straight back to get them out. Don't pull on an angle. All right, now you're just three eight millimeter bolts away from destroying what's left of your cluster so you can get your wallets and pride ready for the drive of shame to Audi. Pull these three bolts out. Make sure you drop one into the air vent or behind the dashboard. When the bolts are out, pull the cluster towards you and tilt the top of it down. Unplug this connector. You'll need either fingernails of steel or a flat blade screwdriver. Don't bother taking the battery off so all of your ECUs can fuck right off in the process. Then it's free. So now we go inside because it's light and it's fucking cold out here. Okay, now we need to disassemble this horror. On the back there's a lot of T10 screws and a few T8 screws. So grab some Torx screwdrivers and remove all of the screws you see on the back cover. Here's the part number of my cluster. If you have the same, it's highly likely that your problem is the same as mine. After you've gotten all the screws out, go ahead and find the four clips which hold the front glass to the back cover. Go ahead and remove three and break one. Pull the whole assembly apart and set the glass aside, trying not to touch the inside of it or the matte black surfaces on the cluster as this will leave your grimy fingerprints all over them and great embarrassments among your automotive inclined friends who you will undoubtedly show your repair to. Go ahead and remove the LCD. There's just the electrical connector holding it at this point. The three T8 screws in the back were the mounting screws for it. Now this part is important, so listen up. If you don't have access to the programming tools at Audi, make sure you know exactly where your tech, speed, fuel gauge, and temp gauge needles rest when the car is off. To do this, turn all four needles against their lower hard stops and take a photo of your cluster. You'll need to put the needles in exactly the same positions when you're finished with this repair because otherwise you'll need to have them recalibrated at Audi. Now the needles are pressed onto the shaft of the little motor which drives them and in order to remove them just take the needle in the center with your fingers and rotate it into the hard stop. Keep rotating through the stop and pulling upward until it pops off. It might take a couple of turns to get it off. The temp gauge and the fuel gauge hits the ring that's around the tech and the speedo so those you'll have to do with two flathead screwdrivers prying upwards from both sides after all four needles are removed go ahead and locate the clips which hold the black back cover to the white plastic in the middle of the assembly remove all of them and set the back cover aside then locate all of the clips which hold the pcb to the white plastic 
remove all of them and set the white plastic aside, leaving you with just the bare PCB. Now, before people start bitching at me, the PCB is ESD sensitive, meaning that it's sensitive to electrostatic discharge. And if you have charge built up on you, there's a very good chance that you will kill the entire board. Prepare your wallet. Now, I've grounded my wood, so I'm totally safe. But if you aren't, make sure that you only handle the PCB by its edges and don't stick your fingers in the shiny metal parts. Also, before you do anything, it would be good to touch either the ground pin of any nearby socket or touch something large and metal. Now the fun starts. Once the PCB is free, locate all of the LEDs which need to be replaced. Go ahead and replace all of them. Don't try to save your mind now. I'll leave a link to the LEDs in the description. There are 20 in total which need to be changed. If you look closely at the various LEDs on the board, there are some which have a yellow dot in the center and some which are clear. We're working on the yellow dot ones, not the clear ones. If you want to convince yourself that the LEDs are the problem, go ahead and take a voltmeter and set it to diode mode. Put your test leads across the LED. If it doesn't light up, in one direction, flip the leads. If it still doesn't light up, it's fucked. If it does light up, your meter will show the forward voltage drop of the LED and you know that that one is still good. However, replace it anyways. Since an LED is just a diode, it'll flow currents in one direction and block currents in the other direction. That's why it only lights up in one direction if it's still good. Now look real good and close at one LED. You'll see that there's a little triangle on the one corner. This triangle marks the cathode of the diode. Take a sharpie and put a dot on the PCB at every cathode. You will need to solder the new LEDs in the same orientation as the old ones were on the board. If you don't, you'll end up doing this twice. To change the LEDs, you'll need a few things. A soldering stick, the tip doesn't need to be super fine. Some solder, some solder wick, some PCB cleaner, some tweezers, and your brain. Crank the solder stick up as high as she'll suffer. Now tin both pads of the LED with a bit of solder to ensure a good electrical contact. Now to remove it, hold the soldering iron on one pad for some seconds. Can be 5 or 10 seconds. Get some heat into it. Don't worry about melting anything. The PCB is designed for it and the LED is fucked anyways. Quickly move the tip to the other pad and gently pull the LED off the board. Do not force it. It should basically fall off. If you force it, you'll probably rip a lead off of the parts or worst case, rip a trace off the PCB. Next, take your solder wick and clean up the remaining solder on the pads. Now you can put some new solder on one pad. After that, you're left with this crusty shit, which isn't cool at all. So take some PCB cleaner and clean the flux off of the board. Take your part in your tweezers and slide it into the hot solder. Then put a bit on the other pad and you're done. Finally, take your PCB cleaner again and clean the entire parts. Don't worry about the cleaner. It's mostly alcohol, so it'll evaporate. And even if it doesn't evaporate, it's non-conductive. Now repeat this 19 more times, and then reassembly is just the opposite of disassembly. Now don't go spending all the money you saved on hookers and blow just yet. My PayPal is linked in the description below.